my name is Rob Latour and I'd like to show you a program which I wrote, which you are welcome to download and install and run on as many Windows computers as you would like. The program is called Push to Run and basically what it allows you to do is give commands to uh, your Google device such as a Google Mini or a Google Home and have them run on your Windows PC or laptop. So through this demo I'm going to be uh, issuing commands uh, through my uh, Google Home device here and uh, because of that and because you're listening to this uh, uh, video uh, if you have a google uh, device nearby you may want to put it on mute just so that it doesn't pick up all the all the commands that uh, that you will hear through the course of this demo so uh, what i will do in this uh, demo is show you uh, some of the features and functionality of the program uh, but what I won't do is uh, walk you through how to set it up. If you want to know how to set up the program, you can go to um, the website, uh, pushtorun.com, uh, download a copy and go to this setup page. It'll walk you through the instructions on how to set up the program. Uh, but what I will do is show you how the program works. So um, when you uh, first install the program and you go through the setup, so it'll put this little icon on your screen. Uh, just double click on it as I did there and it'll open up a window like this. Uh, with that in place um, you can now do things like this. OK Google, tell my computer to open the calculator. OK, I told your computer to open the calculator. And uh, voila, there you have a calculator opened up on your screen. So um, how that works is uh, there's a card here and we're just going to double click on that to open it up. And uh, what you see in the card is uh, uh, kind of a description of um, what, the, what the action is all about, the phrases to listen for, and you can have as many there as you like. Uh, and um, when those phrases are picked up, it'll run uh, this program. It doesn't have to be a program. We'll see other things like websites and um, files and uh, scripts and things like that. But um, this program here is called the Calc program. It's actually called Calc.exe, and it's in your Windows system path. So um, that may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but uh, basically uh, you don't need the .exe, just the name of the program. And because it's in the systems Windows Windows systems path, you don't need to give it the full uh, path of all the folders. Uh, leading up to where the program is stored. Uh, other programs you will, and we'll see that, um, but for this one you don't. Um, you can also uh, add a startup directory because some, uh, some programs require to, to, uh, the, them to start in a specific directory, uh, parameters to pass in, and uh, a little indicator here whether the program needs to run with administrative privileges or not. Uh, but for now, uh, there we have it. There's the program. Now, um, before we get too far along, I'm going to say, um, here are the phrases it's going to listen to. So if I, uh, uh, first of all, if I uh, say something that's wrong, say, say uh, OK, Google, tell my computer to open a calculator. OK, I told your computer to open a calculator. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tell you down here that it, it heard that phrase, uh, but it didn't find it. OK. So uh, if you want to go here, view and session log, it's going to show you kind of a blow by blow of everything that the, uh, the program has um, heard and done since it was first started up. So here you can say, here it says open a calculator. You see that that's not there. So you can actually take that and you can drag it over there and then that'll add it to the list of things for it to listen to in the future. Okay. So uh, another thing you can do uh, is you can drag various types of uh, uh, files or shortcuts into the, the main window here to have, uh, have a card created automatically for them. So this is uh, a ruler for Windows. It's another program I've written. It's freeware as well. You're welcome to it as well. And uh, basically uh, by dragging the shortcut there, uh, and it's gonna. What it's gonna do is it's gonna uh, give you some uh, variety of commands that you can use to uh, start the program. There's the full program, so it's called aruler.exe, and you can see that's the directory that it's stored in, and the start directory is there as well. So now I can say I'm gonna turn that on, 
and um, I can say, OK, Google, tell my computer to open a ruler for Windows. OK, I've told your computer to open a ruler for Windows. And there you go. Uh, another thing I can, uh, I can drag on here is a, say a shortcut to a website. So this is a shortcut to the Wikipedia website. So I'm just going to change the wording on this a little bit. I'm just going to say open Wikipedia. And with that in place, and I'll turn it on as well. Uh, I can say, OK, Google, tell my computer to open Wikipedia. OK, I told your computer to open Wikipedia. And then that'll bring me to the Wikipedia website. So another thing I can do is, so here's a, here's a shortcut to a, a Microsoft Excel file. It has a specific file type of XLSX, uh, which uh, your computer knows belongs to uh, um, Excel. So if I just double click on it here, it would open up and uh, there's, the, there's the spreadsheet. So I can also just drag that over there. It doesn't, it can be the actual file. It doesn't have to be a shortcut. And there it is. So what I'm gonna say here is change this around a little bit. I'm gonna say open example spreadsheet. And so here's where the, the spreadsheet is stored on my C drive. And I can turn that. So um, with these on and off things, you can just toggle them on and off. Uh, if they're off, uh, uh, the, uh, the program won't listen for that particular entry. So, uh, so for example, I click that off here and I say, Okay, Google, tell my computer to open a calculator. Okay, I told your computer to open a calculator. And it says it's, uh, it got it, it matched the phrase, but uh, it's not active, so it didn't run it. So we'll just, and then there's a master switch here. You can turn them all off or turn them all on. And anything that was off uh, when you uh, tagged it off uh, will remain off when you throw the master switch back on. Anyways, so uh, back to the spreadsheet here. Okay, Google, tell my computer to open example spreadsheet. Okay, I told your computer to open example spreadsheet. And there you go. So that was uh, that was done by, again, not uh, not a program name, but a uh, the name of the uh, the the file that has. Uh, uh, a known file type. So another example that would be a dot doc for a word document, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I'm going to just uh, take you on a little detour here. I'm going to show you something called a script. So uh, you can also open script files or bat files. Um, and what those are, are they're, they're just like little mini programs. So here I'm going to drag that over there. And uh, so what this is a special little script file that actually I, I wrote and I I'm, I'm, uh, delivered it with the push to run program. And basically it uh, lets you print off your uh, Google shopping list. So uh, the way Google has it now is you can uh, add things to your shopping list uh, and you can view them on your smartphone, but you can't readily print them. Um, so I've just added this little routine. So I'm going to change this to say open, uh, I change that to say print my shopping list. And so that's what it'll listen for. Uh, there's the file. So let's just, we can just take a quick look at that here. There you go. So it is right there. So if you were to open that up with uh, some sort of editor, you see it's just a small little program. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to navigate to this website here, which is where your uh, Google shopping list is stored. And it's going to uh, print it using uh, Internet Explorer. And uh, so why did I use Internet Explorer? To make a long story short, it's just easier to print with Internet Explorer in this way. So uh, the other thing I'll mention is uh, before you do this, what you need to do is uh, use Internet Explorer uh, at least once. Go to it, go and sign on to your uh, Google account. 
um, and then with the cookies and everything Internet Explorer will remember that so when you go to print the list it'll actually go and print your uh, shopping list if you don't sign on first it'll just print the sign on page um, but anyway so right now if I was to ask Google I was to say okay Google what's on my shopping list you have two items on your shopping list oranges and apples um, okay Google add bananas to my shopping list Okay, and so with all that done, I can now say, uh, okay, Google, tell my computer to print my shopping list. Okay, I told your computer to print my shopping list. So it's going to do that. It's going to do that. So it's going to do a few things in the background here, and then eventually my, my little print will come out. You can probably hear my printer firing up there now. I'll just wait for it to finish. Okay, so now I have a piece of paper in my hand. It says my shopping list, bananas, oranges, and apples. So that worked just fine. So another thing I can do then uh, with the program is uh, I can take these things. I've been dragging things over onto this, uh, to this window here, but I can actually drag them the other way. I can go like this, and I can drag them over here onto the desktop, and that will create a special file of P to our file and um, your computer once you've installed this program will know what to do with that and basically uh, when you double click on it or drag it back over here uh, what it'll do is it'll open up um, a card and it'll be the same information that was here it was there and um, so I'm going to just uh, click OK it'll add another entry in here which um, I really don't need because I already got it so I can delete that here, and I can—I don't really need that either. Um, but that's just to show you I can—I can save these cards. These are a couple cards I'll show you in a second as well. And what they're good for is uh, if you want to back up a particular entry, or if you want to, um, uh, you know, take that and and share it with a friend. You can do—you can email the this little file. It's a, it's a quite a small file. Um, if you want to, you can actually go in and look what's inside of it. Uh, with an editor here basically it's just the information that there's inside the card so if I take uh, this one which is another another card that I'd saved previously and I drag it on here it'll open it up okay so uh, this is a little different so what this is is saying it's gonna listen for uh, me saying something and this dollar sign at the end means it's a variable ending and so if I was to say something that started with browse for and then something, it'll take that something and it'll add it to where I put the dollar sign here in the open field or in the parameters field. So now with this in place, I can say, okay, Google, tell my computer to browse for red fire trucks. Okay, I told your computer to browse for red fire trucks. And there you go. So another thing we can do here is I'm going to show you another example here. Actually, maybe I'll just show you double click on that one. Okay, I can drag it over there as well. Uh, this is another one of these special programs in your system path. It's the shutdown program. Uh, I'll let you can Google these uh, these parameters here. Uh, the point of this card is to show you how parameters work. Uh, and th this is the this is how you would. Uh, restart your computer. So if I click that OK, I'll leave that off. Uh, that way if I accidentally give the command, I won't uh, restart my uh, uh, computer in the middle of this video. Uh, but anyways, so that's it. So now I'm going to just show you a little bit about the look and the feel so, uh, of the application. So when we opened up these cards, uh, we've been doing it by, by dragging things over. Another thing you can do is you can uh, click add here and uh, just type one in if you want but the, the the fields that you see here are the same fields that are across the top and if you want to uh, uh, change, change that you can go to the view and then you can choose here which which few fields you want to see so I personally like them all so I'll leave them all on 
and um, and there you go. So the other thing you can do is here in uh, the actions. Uh, right now, everything's uh, this is set to sorted by description. So all of these entries, when I enter them, have been added in in alphabetic order, and they get sorted in alphabetic order uh, underneath the master switch. So I can take that off, and with that off, I can now take these entries, and I can move them to the top or to the up or down or to the bottom. So I'll move the calculator to the bottom here, and that'll move it to the bottom. I can uh, insert a blank line. So when I do these things, I can either uh, click here. I can use these uh, keys here. So inserting a blank line, I'd use the insert key. Um, or I can right click on an entry here and find all of those things as well. So here I'll insert a blank line. And then I can, I can insert multiple blank lines if I want. And I can use that for break, you know, like breaking this up a little bit and uh, arranging things if I want to do that. Uh, if I go back to uh, sort by description, I'll take all the blank lines out and, and resort everything. So another thing I want to show you here, is, oh, I should also show you if I say I press the delete key and I deleted something, I did that by mistake, uh, I have an option to undo that as well. So it'll it'll remember all the things you do and let you undo them as well. So um, another thing I show you is the calculator here. So the calculator is just a regular program. It doesn't require administrative privileges to run, but I'm going to say that it does here uh, just to show you how we would work with a program that does require that. So with that checked, if I go to run this uh, thing now, oh, sorry, and another way you can run these things is rather than give the command to your uh, Google device, you can just right click here and say run and then it'll run the program. So for example, here's my ruler program, run. And there's the ruler program. So I'm gonna run the calculator here and but because it requires administrative accesses, um, so what's happening now is I am seeing but you are not and that's only because of my screen sharing or screen capturing software. I'm seeing the uh, Windows user account uh, control uh, pop-up screen and I've just clicked on yes to allow that to allow that authority to proceed. So this uh, calculator is now running uh, with admin accesses. So another thing I can do is um, if I don't want that prompt to uh, appear again and again, uh, I can actually start, I can click on this button, give push to run administrative privileges. And if I click on that, what it'll do, and I'm seeing the UAC prompt again, so I'm gonna click yes on it. It's actually gonna exit the program and restart it. And it's gonna restart it, but this time with administrative privileges. So now if I uh, run this program. Okay, Google, tell my computer to open a calculator. Okay, I told your computer to open a calculator. It's going to open it, but it's not going to do the. Uh, it's not going to do the UAC prompt. Uh, but that's only because uh, Push to Run itself is running with administrative privileges, and you can turn those off as well. And again, it'll just shut down the program and restart it. And when it gets restarted, it'll be restarted without administrative privileges. Okay, so um, I think that's it. So from here, you can actually, uh, there's an options option here, and you can click that, and that's where you can go and you can set your options for the, for the program. And there's also here uh, in the help, there's a, there's a little help button. So on the help button, what you, what you do is you just some links to various pages. So that's the, that's the main website as an example. And that brings you to the, kind of the, the main, uh, main web page. Uh, and uh, from there you can click on here to see the detailed setup instructions. Uh, or you can click on here to read the, the detailed help. Uh, from the detailed help, you can actually see as well uh, the version history. So these are the various versions of the of the program. Uh, I just released uh, this version today, so there it is. Uh, and uh, 
and that's kind of the help as well uh, there's a license button here uh, and what that does is you click that and that'll bring you to the Creative Commons uh, it's kind of the write-up of the software license and uh, basically uh, what it says is uh, I'm using the community uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, just kind of general license uh, this one here in particular and uh, what it's going to say you can read it, read about it but basically uh, there's a, a kind of a plain English version of it and a, a more legal version but basically you're free to um, free to use and redistribute this this program uh, just as is described here okay and then um, so there's a donate button there too if you're so inclined uh, here you can just click that and uh, be as generous as you care to be and uh, I guess I think that's it so uh, I've really enjoyed writing this program and uh, I, I do hope it will be of, uh, of good use to you uh, again you're welcome to download uh, and install and run as many copies as you would like thank you very much